Hello and welcome to another mystery mold. This is mystery mold number four of season two. My name is Shelby and I'm a potter. I found this bulk lot of slip casting molds and one by one I'm pouring them up to reveal whatever is inside and then finish it into an artwork. This is the mystery mold series. So let's see what's in today's episode. I am so excited to have another mystery mold out for you this week. It has been a busy time here getting ready for the market, but gosh, I have so many mystery molds on the go at the moment. I can't wait to show them all to you. So I poured this one up and it's sort of round and flat-ish. It's got a bit of depth to it, so it could be a plate, but it could also be a little bit more than just a plate. So I poured that one up, let it set, tipped it out. And before I could open it, I had to clean up that little pouring spout because I knew that the top half of the mold was gonna grab onto that. But once that was gone, I was able to open it to reveal this lovely, dainty, beautiful mushroom bowl that is an additional part of my Arnold's mushroom collection that I've already started. So I've got the salt and pepper shakers, I've got the butter dish. And now I have this beautiful bowl. So I said that there was gonna be an announcement at the end of this video in last week's video, it wasn't a mystery mold video, but that was to say that I recently got more mystery molds and I completed a collection that was gonna be featured in this video. So I won't spoil too much about that just yet. That's at the end of this video, but let's talk about what I'm doing on this piece this week. I have painted a number of mushroom pieces so far and we get the point, we add some color onto the mushrooms and then we add some white dots and then it's kind of done right well this week I actually wanted to try one of your ideas so first and foremost you saw me carving out those mushroom gills in the bowl so when I opened up the mold it looks very well used because it's lost a bit of the detail inside the mushroom bowl itself and I wanted those to be a bit more prominent so I went through and carved my own sort of gills out of that just to make them a little bit deeper the next thing I did was I painted all these mushrooms black and I had a spare mushroom mug that had no handle so I painted that with some black mushrooms as well and I'm actually doing something that's totally different to my usual style I don't usually use black I don't really like using black I think I just love colors so much and I don't often go into that gothic sort of witchy aesthetic too often but someone commented this on one of my videos and I'm not even sure where it was I just read it and I was like that is a really cool idea I want to try with that the comment pretty much said that I would love to see you do some black gothic style mushrooms and and then instead of white dots, do gold dots. And I just love the thought of that. I love the whimsy of it, but also to push myself out of my comfort zone with the colors I often pick, but also to give you something different for this video because you've seen a few mushroom paintings so far and this is a new technique that I felt that I could honor the piece whilst also still trying something new. And I think I'm about out of ideas after this one for new ways of interpreting these mushroom pieces. So this is it. I mixed a nice dark green that you saw before by mixing black with green to do the leafy details just so that they weren't super bright in comparison to the black mushrooms. And then I bisque fired the piece and rubbed a watery black underglaze all over the piece to get into all those mushroom grooves. And I also did it on the outside and it just really made all those textures and details and all the grooves pop so much more. I also did some normal colored ones as in normal for me. So I did a blue set. I did some of the 70s autumny brown colors and I also did some red toadstools. Now, of course I've done those before. So we've seen me painting them a number of times. So I didn't show you those details, rather just showed you the black and the process of that. But we're only halfway done with that. I glazed all those up by dipping them in and then popping them through the bigger kiln. Here is the amazing results, but we're not quite done yet. We've still got to add some dots. At the moment, the black bowl and the black mug look a bit plain without their little dots. I mean, they look great, but they just feels like they're a little bit naked, you know? The other bowls turned out so, so great, but we're going to add the gold to these bowls now. Also, can we just take a moment to appreciate the sun setting in this shot and how golden it made this whole kiln unloading look? It was so magical and 
it just made everything shimmer. I got the gold luster out and it's usually a ready brown color, but as I was painting on top of the black, I realized I could not see a thing. So I had to sit in the brightest light to try and get the reflection of where it was wet and raised to see where I had actually painted the gold because you can't smudge the gold. Otherwise it goes where it goes, wherever it goes. And also I couldn't see how thick or where I'd placed them. So it was totally unknown whether I was applying it correctly. I popped it into the gold luster kiln and the results were just phenomenal. I am so happy with how these turned out. So now we have the finished results. Finally, let's talk about them. So I absolutely ended up loving this black and gold design. It's not something I would typically do, but I just love the thought of the idea when someone shared it in the comments. I just love that the gold really shimmers and it gives it this sense of elegance, but glamour, but also kind of gothic. It's really whimsical in that way that it just plays on a couple of different genres all at once. I love how this turned out. It was a little bit painful adding the gold, so I don't know whether I'll do these again but I loved being able to try something new this week. As for the other bowls, I loved how they turned out. They're all so bright, vibrant and crispy. They just look so amazing and such a wonderful addition to the mushroom set that I already have. And I just think that these will go so great even for breakfast in the morning, a bowl of cereal and you can add your little red mushroom mug that I've made and it'll just be such a nice little set together. I do think that this bowl isn't really suitable to to soup even though it said it was a soup bowl I think that it's more suitable to something like cereal or even like a small bowl of dessert or something just because I know when I have soup I have a really big bowl I don't think this will fit much soup in it itself otherwise I am just so so happy which leads me to the next part of this video if you watched last week's video I shared that I got so many more mystery molds and part of these mystery molds is I finished or kind of added to this broader collection of pieces that I've already revealed. And if you watch that video and then watch this video and waiting to see what the collection is, obviously it's the Arnold's Merry Mushroom collection. So I'm gonna grab all those out. I'm gonna pour them up so that you can see them and then I might be able to make a video. I think I will make a video of making them all up and building the collection and showing you the finished result of the whole collection rather than doing each one as a mystery mold because I, we get it, painting mushrooms. We, we add red, we add some white dots and they look great. So I didn't want to, I want to save the mystery molds for things that are a bit more random and have a bit more depth and ideas to them and then just keep all the Arnold's together. But yeah, let's get into it. Let's pull them up and have a look what we've got. Ended up with quite a few Merry Mushroom molds, which is so, so exciting. I realized that this is definitely nowhere close to the full set because I looked up the full set whilst I was doing this because there are pieces in this that I have never seen before. And the collection is so extensive. If you think of anything that's kind of functional or decorative, they made it. They made it a merry mushroom thing. This could be like not even one eighth of what I could get out of all the molds. This collection itself is very collectible as vintage pieces that are finished, but also very collectible in the molds. I know so many potters that are trying to collect all of these molds as well. I have always loved mushroom pottery. My fascination with mushroom pottery has always been a thing. And since discovering that this collection exists has just made me want to collect it. It's not a trend for me. It's definitely something that I have wanted to have and do for a very long time. So with these molds, it was a lot of trial and error of figuring out how much they took, how much to pour, how to tip them out and things like that because I currently don't have a slip casting table. I would love one. It's like, so it was just trying to figure out how we could best pour out these massive molds as well. So far we had pretty much a good success rate. There was one that spilt all on the floor, but we scooped all that clay up and could reuse it because I keep my studio really clean in case we do have spills like that. But otherwise, they were just a bit big and awkward, but we got through. All right, it is time to open them. They've set overnight. There's a couple I didn't pour just because I ran out of room on the table and I also didn't have enough rubber bands or straps to keep them shut. So we're just gonna do the ones that we do have. Let's open them. This is a large serving platter. I 
Let's try and take this out now. I'm gonna let that platter sit. It looks like it's dry enough because it's come away from the mold. I think it's just getting stuck on some of the little details. So whilst that is open and drying out, I'm actually gonna open one of the canisters. Oh my goodness. It is so much nicer than I thought it was gonna be. Oh, wow. Oh my goodness. Isn't that cool? Oh my gosh. It's so cool how it's got a cool curviness to it, like an actual mushroom. I think it's this one because it says 758 and the bottom says 759. All right. It's so it's going to end up looking like a mushroom once the lid is on. Okay, we got it. Oh, is that the wrong lid? Because I think this is the wrong lid size, it looks, it's so cute. I'm actually gonna open the slightly bigger canister now so that I can check whether that's the right lid for that. Oh wow, that is really big. I haven't, I've only seen them go like upright like the one before. Whereas this one is kind of like round. <gasps> I just realized what this is. It's a soup pot. It's got the little divot that like you put your spoon in. Oh my goodness. With that said, I don't think that this lid is gonna fit now. Because that is very wide. Alright, I think that this is the lid for that. Oh, I love that! Look how curvy it is! Alright, let's see if it fits. Perfect! That is what I'm talking about! It sits so nicely on there! Oh, wow, that is going to be so cool with the spoon. I wonder if they made a spoon that went with it. See, look at that hole for a nice ladle. That is amazing and the little lid is so cute. I am looking at that lid. See how that fits in nice and snug? Can you see how that's sitting on top? So that's definitely the wrong size lid for this. All right, I'm gonna try this platter again. No, it's not going to work. I'm just going to leave it upside down for a bit and like gravity gets me. I'm going to suss out this lid and see if this fits. If not, it might be one of the ones that I didn't pour thinking that I had already got that size. I think this is too small. Yeah, this is a coffee pot lid. Yeah, it's too small. Okay, I think I found the mold for the lid for this one. So what I did <laughs> was I knew this one was too big and I knew this one was too small. So I went through all the molds I didn't pour and found one that was the perfect in-between size. It was actually a bit of a risk pouring this one up because I didn't have a rubber band that went down that way and it's actually got a bottom part that could have popped out. I was just kind of relying on these rubber bands and the pressure of the clay from stopping that from popping out because it kind of locks in. Oh my fairy garden. I can imagine having the best summer iced tea out in the forest with this teapot. Look, it's like a tree with mushrooms growing on it. Oh, would you look at that? That is so cool. It's like a big tree stump with mushrooms on it, but it's a teapot. I don't deserve to be having this much fun with what I'm doing. But 
but it's just so cool. Oh my goodness. I am just so obsessed with that. Gosh, that is a fairy tea party waiting to happen in that one. Oh, it's coming up the base. Oh my goodness. Isn't that cool? Oh my gosh. Oh, I reckon this is the lid. The shape definitely matches up. The moment of truth. Oh my goodness. That is so cool. That is fabulous. I am so happy with that. <laughs> so adorable. Oh, what a treat. Would you look at that? Isn't that amazing? I'm gonna try this big round plate. There's two others over there. Oh, that was a shock. I thought that was gonna be difficult to take off given the big large one that I still haven't gotten off. But, oh my goodness. It's a mushroom plate. And look at all the tiny little mushrooms. This is gonna take forever to paint, actually, but very cool. Wow. This plate, on my initial reaction is, wow, look at all those mushrooms. But the plate doesn't actually have that much room for food on it, which is making me think, whilst I'm looking at that soup dish, or even that teapot, is that it's a plate for that. Because if you have a look at this, see how that's, it's almost like a saucer. I don't wanna to put too much weight on the plate right now because of weight on the plate. Just because it can cause it to warp, but, oh my gosh, that fits perfectly. I reckon it's a plate for the soup. <laughs> One more big plate, let's open it up. Oh my goodness, it's not a plate. Is that for eggs? What is that for? Oysters? Is it an oyster plate? Oyster mushroom plate? <laughs> this looks like a deviled egg plate where you put your little egg half in each of the pots, but you could also do like oysters on there or something. This one actually has a little dot in the center. So I'm wondering whether it's like a tiered, a tiered plate system. Oh my gosh, a single serve coffee pot. It's kind of gorgeous. Would you look at that? Isn't that so sweet? It's so tiny. But let's see if we've got a little lid for this. I'm gonna try this lid. It's not the right lid. It's not the right lid. <laughs> All right. That means it's the other one, hopefully. Hopefully. That is way too big. All right, what a bummer about the lid sitch. All right, I've had a look for the lid for this and I can't find it. I am thinking it could still potentially be in that pile. The other thing is I am going back to the people that I got these from and they might be able to find it. It might be still there in their collection. So I think this one goes with that lid that I thought was for the teapot. I, I definitely, I feel like I've got it. I'm gonna have another look in that pile. Oh my gosh. It's a little sugar pot, but the handle to the sugar pot are little mushrooms. Oh, oh, it's a sugar pot and the handle's a little mushrooms. I'm certain. Yep. Ah, that is adorable. Look, it's kind of lopsided, which I love. It's like a topsy-turvy little mushroom. Oh, that is my favorite. <gasps> oh, I opened that a bit quick, it bounced out. That is gorgeous. It's a tumbler. <gasps> but you know what I'd use this for? I'd use this as a vase. Isn't that sweet? Just a nice little tumbler. You could put some like nice flowers in there. Beautiful. 
beautiful. It's a lovely saucer. Oh, hang on. That fits perfectly in that. I, I feel like it should be a teacup, but that does fit perfectly in the ring allocated. I was able to get this flipped over, but I feel like I've warped it in the process. It was really, really tricky. So I think that this one needs a bit more drying time, but at least we can have a look at it. That is a wonderful serving platter. So I'm really excited about that and I'm so glad I could open it so that you guys could see as well. So here are most of the pieces. Some of the plates are still over there because they didn't fit on the table, but this is the collection so far. What I'm missing from here is actually the salt and pepper shakers because I've got those. So I'm hoping we can find the lid to this little guy because we've got two of those. So it would be a shame if we had two teapots and no lids, but we can always make lids to fit them. Otherwise, I'm really, really happy and what beautiful timing to have gotten the new molds right when I had done this mushroom bowl because it meant that I could show you a bit more of that collection in this video and it just it just made sense to do it now i hope you enjoyed this week's mystery mold video that turned into a big unveiling at the end let me know if you would like to see me create all of these pieces in one video it might be a while away because we're still gonna wait for those straps as i said and maybe what color you would like me to paint the mushrooms i feel like i should do them red but that's just because of tradition. Let me know what you think of this week's mystery mold reveal and the results of the black and gold in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and I can't wait to see you next week and here's your sneak peek.